Welcome everyone to another short demo on Creo Parametric. Today we're going to look at capturing design intent using Sketcher inside of Creo Parametric. Uh, again, we're going to use the 777 race car model as the basis for our design. So we're going to open up a part underneath the 77 race car using it uh, again as part of what we'll sketch on to illustrate various commands inside of Sketcher. Uh, so looking at this part, we want to sketch on a surface. Now, there's a variety of ways you can go and actually sketch. One would be more of a, uh, let's say, old school way where you can click sketch on the modeling tab on the ribbon on the top, choose your surface, and then choose a reference surface, clicking sketch. And then the part will reorient depending on your settings and your categories if you want it to be parallel to your screen or not. And now you can start sketching, and I see the sketch toolbar on the top across my ribbon. Now that's more of an old way to do that, so I'll cancel this sketch. And I'm going to go back, spin my model back around to where I was originally. And instead of clicking sketch, what I'm going to do is something called seeding a surface. So I'm going to select the surface, holding a specific key, in this case on my keyboard. And now when I click sketch, it's actually going to seed that surface, choosing the reference for me. Uh, and capturing intent automatically, uh, eliminating extra steps, if you will. Now, you still have the ability to go back to Sketch Setup if I want to, to change my sketch plane, to change the surface, change my orientation, or, or rename the sketch if I want to. Now, a lot of functionality built into Creo Parametric has been placed at the right click. So let's say you want to add references. I could right click and choose references and then select various lines, entities, or maybe even datums if I want to that I want to use as reference points, reference lines, uh, reference edges that I could dimension to. So I'm now able to come in and start to draw lines and then those lines will be able to be dimensioned in this case to those various references. Another element I could do is maybe I want to change from the actual shaded mode to maybe a no hidden mode so I can see through the shape. I can also do hidden lines if I want to. Now, within Sketcher, I have a variety of tools on my toolbar across the top that I could use to sketch with. But let's say instead of starting to sketch, you would like to use existing geometry within your sketch. So I have two holes, two cutouts, one on the right, one on the left, and I really would like to use the curvature of the hole, but maybe offset one unit to the right and left of each hole. Well, I could use a command called offset, select the edge I want to offset, and then in the direction of the arrow, I can key in the distance that I want to offset. In this case, maybe I'll offset one. Now you could also say, well, maybe I'd like to not do this, so I'm just gonna delete this line out, and maybe what I would wanna do is maybe offset and project or thicken. Well, what I could do is select thicken in this case, choose my edge, and I'll say, well, the end result I want to be like, uh, let's say, maybe 0.25 thick. And then again, in the direction of the arrow, I'm going to offset a specific length. And it now kind of produces something with similar to a double offset, if you will. And then I can make this, again, this was a single line, but I could choose multiple lines if I want to as I'm offsetting, as I'm projecting, as I'm, as I'm drawing. Now back to Sketcher. I have a variety of tools I can use. I can use lines, I can use shapes, uh, I can come in and I can snap to various references in this case. But as I'm drawing now, I'm actually seeing constraints appear. I'm actually seeing various dimensions appear. And what I'm doing is capturing intent. So as you sketch, as you draw, uh, you'll actually start to see constraints. And this goes along with the theory of constraining on the fly, capturing design intent. And we have another little video out. We, we illustrate this a little more in depth uh, than what I'm going to cover here right now. But basically I can lock in these constraints by right clicking my mouse, making this, in this case, this entity, this line, always be vertical no matter where you move your mouse. So it's another way to assist you in actually sketching. Some other tools inside of Sketcher. You can have these red dots appear. It's actually called Highlight Open Ends. You can also turn on Shade Closed Loops. So if the sketch you're creating needs to be a closed loop for the feature you need to create from this, those actual um, inspection tools will assist you in creating what you're drawing. And we'll address that and we'll see that as we go forward. Um, now, let's say you want to delete some items. You want to modify some segments. Well, I can use a delete tool and simply just hold the left mouse button down and 
drag your mouse about the screen through the entities that you want to delete and those parts of those entities are deleted or just select a line or an entity and those lines or entities are deleted themselves. So a variety of ways you can actually sketch, you can actually create different uh, um, elements for what you're wanting to capture in this case. Now you also have the ability to create other types of shapes. Uh, rectangles, various types of rectangles, center rectangles, slant rectangles, and again I'm capturing intent where I can right click my mouse locking in a constraint and then drawing my entity in this case. Maybe I would like these now to be aligned so I can right click and align this rectangle so it's always aligned no matter what direction I drag this. Maybe I can lock this into the entity now this curved line and I'm capturing that intent. So a variety of ways you can actually create and capture intent as you're sketching uh, to assist in these different types of methods uh, as you create different geometry. Now here's an example of the closed sketch. There's a closed loop. The closed loop is shaded. Now it may not be the intent what I want, so I can use again delete segment and delete the various segments off the screen that I no longer want within this within this shape. And I can keep going around deleting different segments. And as I delete segments, I may see additional references that are left. Those references can stay or you can delete those references too as well. A variety of options you have when you're actually creating geometry within, uh, within Sketcher. Now, you also have rounds, you also have chamfers uh, in this case. You also can create construction geometry. So maybe I'd like to create a round here in the lower left, but what I would really want is I want to keep this construction geometry for later purposes. So I can create the round, then come back in and add the round radius if I want, but keeping the geometry of where the original lines were. So you have the ability to do that. You also have the ability to convert lines from construction lines to geometry and geometry to construction. So I can just right click and make this line a construction line if I choose or right click it again and make a geometry depending on the intent of what you're actually trying to capture. You also can mirror elements. So let's say this arc that I drew on the left and the vertical line on the left, I would really like to mirror about maybe a center line. Well, first let's create a center line. So I'm going to create a center line through the center of this actual shape over top of my reference. I'm going to use that as symmetry. So then I'll select my lower arc on the left, the line on the left. I'm going to use my mirror command, select my vertical center line, and mirror that about the right side. Again, capturing intent where I'm seeing my symmetric arrows, one on the right, one on the left, telling me these objects are symmetric about that vertical center line. Now you could always go back and actually add symmetry by using the symmetric constraint on the sketch tab in the constraint panel manually after the fact. But what I'm doing is I'm actually in the intent manager, or using the intent manager uh, and its intent as I sketch to create and capture these, uh, these different types of constraints, this intent of my sketch. Now there's a few little things I need to clean up here on the bottom. And maybe there's a couple open loops as I see two reference dots. A variety of tools you can use. I can use actually constraints to complete this so I can select two coincident constraints. And another tool that will appear is a resolve mode in Sketcher. So if you try to over constrain something, you add too many constraints, you can actually tab through and see these constraints and you have a choice of what to do. Undo what you just did, delete something, in this case a dimension or a constraint, or make something a reference or click explain and have it explain to you what exactly the issue is for what you created. Okay. And then I can go back and actually continue on sketching in this case. And what it will do is we'll capture the intent maybe from the coincident point here on the left side to the coincident point on the right side in my example. And we'll just reverse it back around. And there's a couple other ways we could do. Maybe instead of a line, what I'll do is I can create an arc. Well, there's a variety of tools you can use for an arc in this case. I can lock one into the right, lock my intent into the left, and now I can just drag to create this different type of curvature for this arc, for whatever I'm choosing to create here in this example. And then placing that, and again, I'm seeing the intent as I sketch. Now, from a dimension perspective, dimensioning inside of Sketcher, you have one dimension tool, but all depending on what you choose is what you get when you dimension. 
So I can select my arc, and middle mouse click to drop this produces a radius dimension. Radius dimension now changes that dimension to a strong dimension, locking it in where I can recall the dimension now for when I create this part, and then I place this part on a 2D drawing later downstream. If you were to double click the arc in middle mouse click, I can produce a diameter dimension in this case. Now you can always convert it. So if you create the wrong dimension, I could always right click and say convert to the other type of dimension in this example. And the strong dimensions, you can always delete in this case and convert those back to a weak dimension, um, which is only there showing you where the placeholder is. Or you can always lock the dimension in, turning it red, meaning that entity cannot be changed by other surrounding entities as they change or you can unlock it as well too. So a variety of different elements you can use when you're actually capturing intent inside of Sketcher. Now I do have one open issue on the left. I have overlapping lines illustrated by the red dots. So I'm going to go through and clean this up. And then what I can do is actually finish this in this case by maybe extending out or corner trimming some of my entities. Now, depending on what you choose and what you select, you can end up with different elements or different options. But what I see here now is I've actually created this loop uh, of the sketch capturing intent both in the constraint area and also in the dimension area of what I've actually created. Now these elements can be turned off by your graphics toolbar or the shortcut bar. Selecting the drop down you can choose to display dimensions or constraints or grid or vertices points or turn them on or off whether you whether you like or what, whatever your intent is for what you're actually using. Um, so there's a variety of tools you can use both for sketching elements also for dimensioning elements. And if you have sketches already created or let's say you wanted to save this sketch. We want to create this, maybe this print that I'm creating now, I want to use for a later point. So I could save this sketch in this case. I can save a copy of this and I can create a sketch file, save it to my library. And then after I've placed it in my library, I could pull it from my what's called palette and then choose different sketches that I've already placed within my library. Maybe it's a network library or a local library. And you can insert these into your sketch for future drawings. Um, so you're, again, you're capturing intent. You're saving time based on the different functions of what you're doing inside of Sketcher. Again, thank you for your time uh, in the overview of Creo Parametric Sketcher.